it's the next day, and uh, here's what I've done so far. I just kind of took all of my oil that was in here and uh, put it into this uh, completely petroleum safe jug using my little uh, redneck funnel. Okay, I have officially decided that whoever designed this truck was a moron because that right in there, oops, too far, that is the drain plug. I don't know if you can really see it. And as you may be able to see, it's right above part of the frame. So uh, once I start draining the coolant out, it's going to go all over the frame and make a huge mess. Alright, so maybe they weren't so stupid after all. Because as it turns out, uh, it actually bleeds from the side. Um, so I was able to just take this radiator hose that was, you know, part of the engine, attach it to the side, and uh, route it all neatly into my bucket. And uh, you can probably see it's, uh, it's draining nicely right there. That is disgusting. I'm so glad I'm never going to have to deal with this again. Hopefully for as long as I live. And there's the last of it. Can't wait to dispose of this right now. So it turns out it didn't even matter they had that drain plug because when I took off the lower radiator hose, of course there's still more in it. And as you can see, it's now dripping off the frame just as I thought it would. So yeah, pretty bad design by Chevy I guess. I'm just glad it's almost over dealing with all this fluid. Look at that, two full jugs worth of fluid. We got oil in the left one, mostly, and coolant in the right one, mostly. My electric car is going to have almost no fluid. There'll be the transmission oil in the transmission, and maybe power steering fluid and brake fluid, and that'll be it. No gasoline, no oil, no coolant, nothing like that. I really can't wait. Well, it's only 12.48, but I feel incredibly tired. Because I just spent the past God knows how much time uh, dremeling through these exhaust bolts. And uh, now the whole thing, it, it is separated as you can see. So I should be able to pull the exhaust out, finally, at least the back end. Well, a lot of effort later and I finally got this, uh, this exhaust out. This isn't the full thing. There's still some more with like the cat and things like that on it. Uh, further up, but this is uh, the bulk of it, so I'm feeling pretty good. Well, here's something that was kind of scary. Oh man, it smells so bad in here right now. I just uh, took off the AC compressor, and you know, you really should get this discharged properly, instead of just doing what I did, which was just opening the bolt and let her loose, because that's really bad for the environment, not to mention the uh, color of your engine bay. <laughs> Oh man, this is this is, smells really bad. <laughs> so I, I was pulling off this the screw and then pulling off the compressor, and suddenly all this this green stuff, which I can only assume is freon, just shot out. And I, I just stepped back as far like like as far as I could, and watched as the force of it actually shot the compressor out of that spot, and it fell through the engine bay and landed there. So I hope it's still good because I was hoping to reuse this, but, oh man, that was, that was pretty intense. By the way, in case you hadn't figured it out, the only reason I did open up the compressor, which, like I said, you really shouldn't do, is because it's, uh, it's kind of late to be driving this thing over to a shop to get the, thing, the, uh, the compressor discharged, or the whole AC system discharged, because I've done quite a lot of taking apart. Uh, this, this pile of stuff is growing and growing, slowly but steadily and uh, you know exhaust is over here um, no gas tank or anything no fuel lines and I wasn't about to call somebody out here just to discharge this so please forgive me I think watching me clean is very exciting vehicle and uh, I'm going to start undoing the bolts that connect the engine to the transmission. This is the uh, the engine, this is the oil pan, and this back here is the transmission. 
So I don't know how well you can see in here, uh, but there are a lot of really big bolts, like that one right there that needs to come out, and I'm not even sure that I have wrenches big enough to take on, take those on. Uh, some of minor stuff like uh, this random arm and that there. Uh, but yeah, that's my next task. Wish me luck. Well, we're now at the beginning of the fourth day, and this engine is still in here. But it will be coming out today. I've got all the bolts that attach it to the transmission all undone. Uh, so it's just the motor mounts on the left and right, and I really don't think there are any more. And uh, she's out of here. And also something really exciting today is my batteries should be arriving. Uh, but I have no place to put them, so uh, that'll be interesting. 24 batteries, and uh, <laughs> I don't know where they're going to go. Probably going to have to like clear out this truck bed or something. Um, but I don't know where the stuff in the truck bed's going to go. So it'll be interesting. By the way, if you notice the wallow jugs, don't ask. What I think I'm going to do now is actually uh, just attach the engine to my hoist, which I built the other day, and uh, just start jacking. Like I believe I've said before, I just have stupid problems sometimes. As you can see, this is clearly touching the bumper right here. And up here, this is mere inches away from the seat belts it needs to be attached to. And that means I have to go move this bolt up another notch. And that means it can't hold quite as much capacity. It should still be fine. I mean, half a ton should, you know, this engine does not weigh <laughs> a thousand pounds, but I just figured I'd put it on three quarter ton to be safe. But apparently that was a mistake. Stupid problem. So I decided I really didn't like this seatbelt idea because I didn't want the weak point to be my knots. So uh, fortunately, Chevrolet was nice enough to provide, I don't know if you can see, this, this little bolt hole right there, which isn't really a bolt hole. And uh, another one back here, which you really probably can't see. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's back there, trust me. Uh, and what those are for is actually for holding onto the engine while you're taking it out. So I went to the hardware store and I bought two feet of chain, which is all you need, and uh, two of these quick link things that are rated to hold 1,540 pounds each. So uh, that should do it. I'm going to replace the seatbelts with that and uh, I'll feel a little bit better about myself. Remember what I said about stupid problems? Well, here's another one. We got this nice mounting point right in the front of the engine here. We got this thing here, and I can't actually fit it on. <laughs> so I'm either, I'm either gonna have to uh, modify this, or return it and get a bigger one, which I'm not so sure if they sell super bigger ones for a reasonable price, uh, or modify that hole a little bit. So I'm probably going to do, you see it, it's off by uh, just a couple millimeters. I could probably just shave that off with the Dremel. So that's what I'm going to try to do now. So here we go. As you can see, I have modified the mount. I also trimmed a little bit off here. So in the end, it was kind of a combination of both things. But now it uh, slips right in there and uh, will hopefully be good for pulling this engine out with. This is the first snow of the season right now. I don't know how you can see this on camera, but it is very, very lightly snowing. This right here is the starter motor. It's so covered in grease, you probably can't even tell. Uh, but yeah, this is the starter motor, and uh, as you can see, it's a bit small, so we'll be replacing it with a much bigger 9-inch motor that will not just be able to start the vehicle, but also drive it as well. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's totally working. Something just broke. I hope it was the nut. Okay, so I'm finally ready to take the engine out, for sure. 
as you can see, it's actually jacked up a little bit. Um, you can tell this motor mount down here is popped out most of the way. Um, I think it's the same on the other side. Um, either way, I know that this side should be sufficiently loose. So all that should be holding it in right now is just maybe a couple wires that I've missed and I was pulling everything out. Then if you look underneath, I've also got a jack with a block of wood on it. That's just to hold up the front end of the transmission. So I can jack that up as needed. Um, obviously I've got the engine hoist right here. So it's just a matter of pulling from here on out. Let's do it. Looks like this wiring harness is kind of holding it in a little bit. And actually, we're completely separated from the transmission now, it seems like. So, from here on out, it will be strictly wiring that I'll have trouble with. Any sensors or such I forgot to pull out. I don't have any scissors, so I'll use a Dremel to get it undone. There we go. Simple. I think it's completely out now. I'm gonna jack it up. Yeah, that, that looks uh, useless. Very useless. That is disgusting. You can see the transmission now, fully. If you look down in there. Also gotta watch the top here. Uh, limited clearance, you know. It's almost out, look at that. <laughs> this is so close. All right. Well, it's out. Oh, uh, this, this could be an issue right here. Um. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> and that is a perfect lesson of how not to pull an engine. Stay tuned for more parts. Coming up on Electro TV. The engine bay gets cleaned. We drive in the snow. And Scott dries his boots. So stay tuned to Electruck TV.